I am Wesley Ford for our city. Shot Spotter is gunfire technology that detects the regular use of gun fires being discharged in dangerous communities. Since its inception in 2016 for the Cape Metropolitan Police, it played a significant part in reducing gun related crimes in dangerous communities. To find out more about this technology, we are at the Transport Management Centre in Gurud to find out how efficient Shot Spotter is. Well, Shot Spotter has assisted. Um, the Metro Police and other agencies um, by, in, uh, by allowing us to know when our gunshots are fired off in a particular area. It helps us to react quicker, to give a quicker response um, and to also approach the scene in a safer manner. We also receive a lot of um, information from the system. It tells you uh, gunshots in the past, it gives you um, heat maps as well. You can deploy better without wasting your resources in areas that, um, that no crime takes place. This has really given the city in the past year value for money and, um, and the successes that we receive from it is priceless. Across the seven square kilometers of Hanover Park in Mannenberg, we have 54 acoustic sensors in, in, the, in the locations um, that detect gunfire. Uh, so basically the sonic boom of the firearm, it gets um, sent to the sensors. As it triangulates um, those sensors, it tells exactly from where the gunshot came it can detect if it's a heavy caliber weapon or, or, or a firecracker or, or it can even tell you if there's multiple shooters on scene. We can also see which direction they're shooting at. So the system is quite intelligent enough um, to give you all that information that you require. So um, once the sensors pick this up, they triangulate, they tell exactly where to go to. The information is relayed to a center um, in the US and within seconds they will relay that information back to this control room the, at the Metro Police and we will dispatch our, our members. The, if a member of public had to phone in to tell us there's a shot, it would, uh, we wouldn't be able to get the proper location and with this system by the time the complainant puts the phone down we would have had officers on the scene already. So basically with Shot Spot we get alerted to um, in gunfire detections. We send our members out there and when we come to the scene, we, we apprehend members running away. We apprehend members uh, with um, firearms. Um, if it's not the person that's shot, we render ambulance assistance quicker. And we get information from the members of public as well. Um, so they basically uh, confirm what the shot spotter technology is telling us. Even if it tells us it's a firecracker, we still respond to it. It's, uh, you know, and um, just to make sure we have members in the areas 24 hours a day. And what they're doing, they're just not waiting on shot spotter detections. They're actually doing proactive policing because the system is telling us during this day, during this time, there's a lot of gunfire patrol there. So what they do is they do stop and searches and they have picked up um, people, suspects with firearms. The system is, is filtered with a lot of sensors. So once the shot is, when a person shoots in the area, um, the system actually tells you about the shot. So that specific sensor picks up the three shots and what our operators does is the system alerts them to the shot and they are actually able to interface exactly who goes to the scene, uh, what response goes to the scene and we actually have outcomes as well in terms of once they've arrived on the scene, what they found, things like the picking up of casings or the uh, arrest of suspects, those things are all then captured onto the system. Because you are able to determine by the range and time of everything happening you can determine exactly how the shooter was acting during the, the whole incident. And when they followed the scene, they could pick up exactly how many rounds was shot and then also how many casings was picked up. All that in terms of the forensic report, we're putting them on the scene. In this case, you could probably have an idea in terms of, for that specific one shot, it tells exactly how many sensors picked up the shot and also in what direction they were shooting. So specifically for an park, um, in this case, there was shots fired and what the system would tell you is in terms of the sensors that picked up that specific shot it tells exactly in what uh, direction the shots went and then you can also see by means of the triangle that the sensors of all the sensors um, that is in the area those that have picked it up exactly where they're located um, the nice thing about the system is that we are able to triangulate exactly in what direction they were shooting because it helps us with the analysis of in terms of gang, gang wars as well.
the red line that you see there, that's the border line um, of where specifically ShotSpot is monitoring. So this area here is Mannenberg and that is a Nova Park. And the red dots that you see, it actually tells you whether it's a single shot, a multiple shot, whether it's possible gunfire, like crackers and stuff. So we are able to determine exactly also where your multiple shots are going off, for, for instance, in, in, a, in a Nova Park. And this, this area here, you can see this is multiple shots, which means there's more than one shot going off. Um, and in, in this system and also in the one that I'm on, you can then determine also heat, heat maps which tells you exactly where the hotspots in that area is. Uh, the system was alerting us to the fact that there was hotspots around specific areas within the Nova Park. So what we did was is we tell our operators of CCTV to monitor that specific location. And in the time frame of those shots going off, we were able to positively identify the shooter. Um, the specific image is taken directly from the camera. Uh, the response, the, the, the people going out to the scene uh, would not have known who the shooter was. And in this case, what we were able to do is we were sending the images to the response and telling him the person that did the shooting is standing to your left. They were able to detain and arrest the person. Um, this is all based on the shot spotter analysis. So this, this is one of the success stories that you are able to tie the shot spotter directly to the CCTV. And as you can see, the camera itself um, you are able to monitor, you are able to zoom in, you are able to get all the details. And what, what is happening with the court case at the moment is we are, there are certain standards that they require from us in terms of law that there needs to be a date stamp, there needs to be time and everything on it. So we've, we've fine-tuned the system in order to make it suitable for the court case. But what it, what it also helps us to do is that we can get, if we get positive results from the court case, this would go for future cases. Um, what I'm also busy with now is that um, we're getting SEPs and uh, your guys from Ceasefire to tell us th in that location, um, so if I go to my map, in this location tell me which gangs belong to which blocks. So you know exactly uh, from this block which gang is shooting to which area because what ShotSpot is also allowing us to do is we can, uh, based on the sensors, we can see in what direction they're shooting. So we will then be able to in future determine, okay, Gang A is shooting versus Gang B, so you know exactly who your targeting is. If a, if a, a gang war, a turf war had to happen, um, we are able to send our specialized units, which is called the GDT, the Gang Drug and Task um, Unit. They are able to respond to the scene and they are, they are more prepared in terms of the, the incident. The, the system that we've got uh, in EPIC, is directly linked in terms of your responses. So every officer, every vehicle, every person within the safety and security structure, maybe your fire, your uh, law enforcement, your metro police, your traffic, they all are linked to that system. And what it allows us to do is you are able to determine based on an incident, if something happens, who the closest response is to that incident. Uh, the system, the EPIC system, um, when, when we build the system with the people in it, you also can determine what the officer is driving. So if you, for instance, have an incident happening within an area that requires a 4x4, four four, the system can tell you, okay, this specific person that is closest to your location is driving a sedan, so he cannot go into that area. Um, we are able to determine if that officer that responds, whether he's carrying a firearm, whether the people within the vehicle that is with him carries a firearm or is not carrying a firearm. So you are, you are sending a response to an incident appropriately. So he knows exactly what is expected and what is happening in the area. If you have a visual in terms of a CCTV in that area, you can also send that feed to the officer too, so he's aware of what is, what is going to be approaching. We do it a lot with regards to the protest marches. So if a protest action happens and there's land invasion, um, because there's so many people in that system, you are able to, um, you can alert fire, you can alert the disaster risk management people, you can alert our officers. You can even, although they're not linked in the system, you can also inform SAPs, so your South African Police Service, they are able to be aware of who's already going there, who's already there. Uh, in many cases, our operators or our, our response vehicles also tell us in terms of how many people you can expect. So uh, we get alerts on our phones that will tell us 50 people busy with land invasion and so you're aware of how many response you also need there. You cannot have one vehicle responding to it, you may have multiple vehicles responding to the scene. Initially the project, the tender was written for an overpark in Mandenburg specifically 
But with the success there, that you'd like to roll it out to other suburbs as well in future? 